There is just something about Paul Rudd, a likable, seemingly regular guy who also happens to be one of the biggest stars in Hollywood. He won fans right out of the gate with his role in Clueless, and then more of them by playing characters like Anchorman reporter Brian Fantana in a run of Judd Apatow movies, and then many, many more as the face of Marvel's billion-dollar Ant-Man movies. Now, the 50-year-old Rudd is starring in the new Netflix series Living With Yourself, where he plays opposite himself. Paul and I got together here in New York for a Sunday sit-down. Talking about the, the new series, which probably unlike anything people have seen. I'm sorry. You tried to murder me. In the Netflix series Living With Yourself, Paul Rudd pulls double duty, playing a down-on-his-luck man. What are you even doing here? And his new and improved clone. I live here. I live here. You have this banter where your timing is great with yourself. How did you carry out these scenes? For me, the best way was to just act opposite air. Whatever character was driving the scene, I would film that one first. Then I would watch the take that I had done when I had to switch over and do the other character to say, oh, I moved here on that line. And wow. so it became choreography. And it was, it was a little weird, <laughs> but I got into the flow of it. The two memorable everyman characters are the latest in Rudd's 25-year run of them. Slapping the bass, mama. Slapping the bass, mama. When life gives you lemons, just say the lemons and fail. Who takes a half hour to go to the bathroom? John Goodman. He has starred on the big screen. A man, man. I know. Wasn't my idea. And small. You are really good. Rudd's earliest performances were at his childhood home just outside of Kansas City. The regular audience was comprised of his British-born parents and his younger sister. Where did that acting thing come from for you when you were growing up in Kansas City? I suppose on some very base level it has to do with being the oldest child. My sister was born a couple years later and I wasn't the only show in town anymore and, okay. and thought, oh, you know, I like the attention if I do a cute little dance, my parents say, good job, Paul, and, I, and it's probably manifested in sure. some way. In college, Rudd studied drama and worked on weekends as a DJ. I was reviewing some footage this morning. You had a certain look about you? Yeah, it was not, it was not a good look. Talks with shorts, Doc Martens. Oh, yeah. I'd like to think that I started the grunge <laughs> movement with my bar mitzvah DJ look. Something tells me that's not quite true. I also noticed you were down in the crowd. You weren't one of these elitist DJs who stayed up in his booth. No, you, you gotta, gotta get in it. You gotta, mix, you gotta mix it up. <laughs> Who's gonna hold the limbo pole? It doesn't hold itself. I thought, oh, this is like uh, this is like a training ground in some in some way or another. I would tell myself that as the tears would <laughs> flow on the inside of my face. Rudd didn't need to DJ for long. His breakout came when he landed the role of Josh, the unlikely love interest in the 1995 classic, Clueless. Some people are not lucky enough to be as naturally adorable as you are. Stop it, you're making me blush. It was the second movie I ever did. Um, the first one I ever did was Hall Halloween 6. Right. He'll come home to kill again. Which came out after Clueless. And I remember I told that to Scott Rudin, the producer of Clueless, and he said, ah, yes, the actor's nightmare. <laughs> Are you saying you care about me? Josh. We had come from uh, a generation where those John Hughes films were so important to us. I remember all of us kind of talking before we ever started shooting the movie, like thinking, wow, it'd be really cool if you know, this movie would hold up like with those ones. And the morning it came out, my phone rang and it was Scott Rudin. He says, people like it. Looks like it's going to be a hit. Don't get used to it. <laughs> Click. But there were more hits. Lots of them. Rudd's career took a sudden hilarious left turn when he met one of the godfathers of modern comedy. You've talked about Judd Apatow starting with Anchorman. 60% of the time, it works every time. That doesn't make sense. What did that movie and that relationship mean to you and, and to your career? Getting to work on, on Anchorman was a, a total 
shift for the way that I worked and on the material that I was working on. There was a lot of people yelling out lines in the middle of a scene and then incorporating it. Ron, ah! what, where are you? Ah, I'm in a glass case of emotion. There was a sense of fun, a freedom, and an in encouragement to say, well, that's really cool. Let's just, let's roll and like, see where that goes. And Judd works in a similar way. This is not a good look for me. You look like a man o lantern. It was very creatively fulfilling. It was also nice because none of us felt like we were spitting in the wind. People were going to the movies. I'm up high. I'm really high up. In 2015, another unexpected turn as Rudd joined the Marvel Universe, debuting as Ant-Man. One question, is it too late to change the name? In a movie which together with its sequel has grossed more than a billion dollars launching the married father of two to another level of superhero stardom. And has it given you some cred with your kids now, too? I don't know if it's given me any more cred than I would have had, but with their friends, with some of their friends. They used to come over and kind of walk past, you know, they go, Ant-Man, when the friends come over. Yeah, they still walk past. <laughs> and now they just want to know what Tom Holland is like. <laughs> A lot has changed for Paul Rudd since that bat mitzvah DJ gig. But much to the obsession of fans, his movie star mug has not. Have you ever looked at a picture of yourself uh, in Clueless, say, and said, oh, I look like that today? Well, I don't see that. <laughs> I mean, I can definitely see the difference, feel the difference, but uh, Keanu Reeves has us all trumped, doesn't he, really? I mean, he's got, he's holding that crown. <laughs> And, uh, and so I think we all just kind of sit and worship at the altar of Keanu Reeves. Paul's new series, Living With Yourself, begins streaming on Netflix this Friday. And his next big project comes when he stars in Ghostbusters 2020 out next summer. Our big thanks to The Spaniard here in New York for hosting that conversation. To hear Paul talk about his experience as a character on Friends as the iconic show celebrates its 25th anniversary, check out our web extras at today.com slash Sunday. And don't forget to subscribe to the Sunday Sit Down podcast to hear the entire unedited interview with Paul Rudd. You can find it on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get yours.